guests, graduates, colleagues, and those of you watching online. As chair of the Institute, it is my very great pleasure to welcome you to this graduation and presentation ceremony. Sadly, COVID forced us to hold the event virtually last year, and so I'm doubly pleased to be able to welcome you in person to what is a day for joyous celebration and one to be shared with your family, your friends, and with us. Given the Institute's strong links with the City of London and its institutions, it is very fitting that we are holding our ceremony in this magnificent medieval hall built over 600 years ago and which is still the administrative centre of the City of London and its corporation. The building is intimately connected with the office of Lord Mayor. Perhaps the most famous of them was Richard Dick Whittington, who, as we all know from the pantomime, held the position three times. What is less well known is that he made a significant amount of money from a medieval version of payday loan schemes for the kings of England. Essentially, you can pay me back when you win the war. So profitable was this that when Whittington died, he left enough money to build houses for the poor, a prison, a hospital, as well as a large library within this very building, thus providing the means for the growth of scholarship and dissemination of knowledge. Since Dick Whittington's day, this building has been used for many different purposes. For many years, it was a law court and the scene of some very famous trials, including one which led to a huge outpouring of public outrage against the treatment of slaves and eventually led to the abolition of the trade. So this hall has witnessed some important moments in our history, which brings us to today, a very special occasion in your lives. In these extraordinary times, it is more important than ever that we join together to celebrate your considerable achievements. And today marks the culmination of a huge amount of work, hard work on your part on a, and on ours too. On these occasions, I usually commend our graduands for successfully navigating the challenges that have presented themselves during their time with us. Financial, intellectual, organizational pressures can present difficulties even in normal times, particularly for those who have juggled study alongside full-time employment. You have my great admiration for coping so well and emerging triumphant with a qualification which we hope will open many doors for you. You have, in addition to your academic achievements, shown a great deal of resilience and adaptability, qualities that we will all need in abundance in a post-COVID world. Today is an excellent opportunity for me to thank the faculty and professional staff at the Institute who, like you, have faced enormous disruption since the spring of last year. Alongside you by your journey have been your family, friends, and supporters. Today is also an, an appropriate occasion to acknowledge the major part that they have played. And finally, I would like to thank the banks and other financial institutions for their very valued support of all our programs and all our students. Today, graduands, you are joining our alumni community who share our a commitment to developing and maintaining the highest standards of professionalism and competence. I very much hope that you will stay in touch with us and with each other and become active members of that community. We will be very pleased to hear about your progress and to support you in any way that we can. We will also need your support because the experience and insight you gain as you build your successful careers will become invaluable to our students in the future. Passing on your knowledge and advice to the next generation, helping others achieve their ambitions as you yourselves have been helped, this is one of the most fulfilling and rewarding 
things that we can do in life. Indeed, I want to thank those of you who've already contributed your time to support the Institute in various ways, including those who've served with me on our Board of Governors and those who have been active as student representatives. You have really made a difference to us and to your fellow students. We wish you the very best for the future. It is now my enormous pleasure to introduce Dr. Claire McCafferty, our Director of Studies at the Institute, who will formally open the presentation ceremony. And just one last word from me. You know this, this is a celebration. So please do free, feel free to make some noise. Congregation, I am pleased to present the following awards that are conferred by the London Institute of Banking and Finance. Each student has pursued the relevant course of study successfully. These awards are Professional Diploma in Banking and Finance, Claire Andrade. David Angus. Georgia Ayer. Linda Bate. Matthew Board. Louise Britt. Theo Brooks. Stephen Brown. Kirsten Bernard. Jack Clifton. <laughs> Olivia Coffey. <laughs> Samuel Conybeer. <laughs> Ryan Coughlin. Tamana Desgupta. <laughs> Martina Ginetti. <laughs> Diane Hargraves. <laughs> Simon Lunn. Warda Morkabokas. <laughs> Louise McCange. <laughs> Jennifer Queenborough. <laughs> Stephen Richards. Afsa Salim. Amy Shada. Catherine Silver.
Pervinder Sohal. Saskia Taylor. Lauren Thomason. And Elizabeth Williams. For the award of Advanced Diploma in Banking and Finance, Rafa Chowdhury. Alice Claranino. <laughs> Keely Field. <laughs> Nicole Nosrati. <laughs> Abigail Pendrick. Thomas Schofield. Grant Seaton. Rob Thompson. <laughs> Samuel White. For the Level 6 Diploma in Financial Advice, Umri Achaira. <laughs> Ashley Blackmore. <laughs> Christian Booth. Matthew Bourne. <laughs> Russell Brett. Samantha Brown. Hermana Kalia. Stuart Cartwright. Congratulations. Benjamin Clay. David Crabb. Joshua Duckworth. Dean Faulkner. <laughs> Graham Fishick. <laughs> Mark Froggett. <laughs> Jared Fry. <laughs> <laughs> Colin Greken. Congratulations. Michaela Green. <laughs> Simon Holloway. Matthew Hughes. Sajad Hussein. David Jobson. Ed.
Eleanor Jordan. Baljit Kaur. Michael Kennedy. Edward Lean. Alice Lording. Jason Lynch. Khalid Mahmoud. Shah Mir. Brian Northfield. Shirley Owen. Becky Payne. Jeffrey Pengilly. Congratulations. Simon Pulliston. <laughs> Justine Purvis. Congratulations. Darren Ransom. Vibhav Shikar. <laughs> Nicola Smith. <laughs> Alison Swift. <laughs> Nick Tasquier. Adam Tabut. Jill Turner. Simon Williams. <laughs> Stephen Woodford. Kieran Woods. <laughs> and Callum York. For the award of Certificate for Documentary Credit Specialist Advocates, Shaheen Budd. Doa El Atwe. Nicola Holmes. Congratulations. In May 2019, the London Institute of Banking and Finance received its first intake of apprentices studying the Chartered Associate Programme as part of their Level 6 Financial Services Professional Apprenticeship. The apprentices were from Lloyds Banking Group and One Savings Bank. The following are the first cohort to graduate successfully from this programme. The Apprenticeship Chartered Associate Programme Finance and Investment, Owen Harris. Henry Larkin.
Gehendi Oju Abiyoye. Alice Smythe. And Che Wilmot. It now gives me great pleasure to welcome our student speaker, Shamir, who graduates today with a level six diploma in financial advice. Good afternoon all. Firstly, I would like to thank the London Institute of Banking and Finance for giving me this opportunity to speak today. I enjoyed my time with LIBF. The syllabus and support was incredible. I found that LIBF way of doing things was more client-centric and practical. They had the client in mind when designing this course. Secondly, I would like to congratulate you all for achieving the highest excellence in your career. Last year has been a very difficult time for us, working from home, staying indoors, not traveling. I don't know about you, I miss the sun. You know what, the basic things like shaking hands, that is something that we take it for granted. This has been even harder for some of you who have lost the loved ones due to COVID. My thoughts and prayers with yourselves and your family. And I can guarantee you this, they're looking down very proud at you all. We are the result of our parents, their parents, and their forefathers. So that's exactly my story. My father came to this country 15 years ago to serve for NHS. My mother works in the care sector looking after the elderly of our community. So the act of service is in my bloodline. During the pandemic, my father, alongside other NHS staff, risked their life protecting and caring for our loved ones. So a massive respect and big thank you to our NHS staff. My, my father keeps telling us this story over and over again. You know what parents are like. He said, son, when I came to this country in 2005, that's exactly how it goes, his head of the department, Margaret, asked him, Mr. Muhammad, why are you looking to work in the UK? My father's response without any hesitation was, I am here for my children's better education. This reminds me of a beautiful quote by Ali ibn Abu Talib. There is no wealth like education and no poverty like ignorance. Education is the fount of success. Education teaches us the difference between right and wrong. With education, you can break the chain of poverty. You all have achieved the highest excellence for me, after 16 exams and about a few retakes, I made it. I am now graduated with a chartered ship with the highest honor for my family. Mom and Dad, right here, this award is for you. I hope you're proud. Thank you. The legacy must continue. We must go on. We all have worked hard to be where we are. We are privileged and honored. What's next? Some of you will go back to work, back to work tomorrow. You newly graduates, the back, will be looking at the new world and challenging it. Bring it on. We're all fortunate enough to have something to look forward to. But what about the less fortunate ones? What about those? In UK alone, one in three children 
who are living in poverty or falling behind with their education. You all can play your part within a wider community and make a real difference. There are over 500 people in this room. You could go to your nearest school and give a talk on basic finance, basic budgeting. If you do that for a class of 30 students, you've touched and reached 15,000 people. Or if you find five people in your friends and family and you agree to sponsor one child in a third world country for free education, you've just changed two and a half thousand children's lives. The power of education is unstoppable, undefeated, uncharted and unlimited. Why not take this opportunity to play your part? Finally, the legacy started from my father's job interview 15 years ago. It's with me now. Now I take on the responsibility to pass it to you. Let's make the world a better place. The change starts with you. Thank you. I would like to introduce our next speaker, Alex Fraser, the Chief Executive of London Institute of Banking and Finance. Please put your hands together. Thank you. Shah, that was absolutely amazing. It was thought provoking and inspiring. So thank you so much. Uh, distinguished guests, graduands, colleagues, uh, first of all, I'd like to take this opportunity of offering my warmest congratulations to you. I can only imagine what it must have been like to study through this. I'd also like to thank my team who have made today possible through the ravages and uncertainties caused by the pandemic. At our graduation ceremony each year, the Institute confers its highest academic award an honorary master's degree on a distinguished member of the financial services community to recognize their contribution to the industry. The notable career of this year's recipient, Ian Stewart, stretches back almost 40 years and has uniquely encompassed senior roles at three of our largest banks. Having left school at 16, Ian went straight into banking, into the only job that was available at banking, working as a cashier in a branch in his native Glasgow, before moving into business banking later. He held a number of roles within business banking during his 22 years at NatWest, before joining Barclays, where he was head of corporate banking for six years. He left Barclays in 2014 to take a broader corporate role at HSBC and was appointed to his current role in 2017 as Chief Executive of HSBC UK Bank. And he is also a member of HSBC's Executive Committee. Whilst working, Ian found the time to study both at night school and then at the University of Reading where he obtained a management diploma. And he maintains a very strong commitment to education and professional development, both for himself and more importantly, for others. As a leader, he has promoted equality and diversity within HSBC and has a very strong innate sense of fairness. This applies to his colleagues within the bank and also to the bank's customers. He is an exemplar of the new generation of bank leaders who have done so much to repair the damage caused by banks and other financial institutions in the lead up to the financial crisis. And he has a deep appreciation of the vital role that banks play in building a sustainable society and in particular to supporting those who are socially and financially excluded. 
Because when we talk about financial inclusion, we often think that the issue is confined to underdeveloped countries in Africa and Asia, or to countries with vast rural populations like China and India. But problems exist here too, and the pandemic has only served to increase the vulnerability of those who do not have access to basic financial services. Ian has done much to encourage social and financial inclusion, and under his leadership, HSBC have created services which are specifically aimed at those experiencing hardship, specifically aimed at people facing difficult moments in their lives, providing access to financial services to the homeless and to the victims of human trafficking. Just as education instills confidence in those who receive it and helps them achieve their career goals and aspirations, so removing barriers to financial services helps build confidence of those who receive the benefit, gives them a great, greater sense of stability and belonging. Ian has been a great supporter of different educational youth and healthcare charities throughout his career. And he served as a trustee of this institute for a number of years and has always given us the freely of his time to support our educational work and to provide very helpful advice. I read an article the other day, one of the many hundreds that appears talking about leadership in the pandemic and the qualities needed to succeed. And most of them talk about adaptability, flexibility, resilience. But I saw one and it highlighted two, which made me think of the recipient of this award, passion and compassion. Ian's passion for what he does shines through, as does his compassion for those within HSBC and beyond. It's now my enormous pleasure to invite our chairman, Professor Stephen Haberman, to make the presentation of a master's degree in banking and finance honoris causa to Ian Stewart. Thank you. Distinguished guests, ladies and gentlemen, a very good afternoon. I feel incredibly privileged and indeed humbled to be presented with this honorary master's degree. I would like to thank everyone at the London Institute of Banking and Finance for bestowing this honor on me. I've worked in different ways with the Institute for many years, and their work in ensuring the UK remains one of the most respected if not the most respected, banking nations on the planet today is testament to the quality of their work and the amount of students who have benefited from the many programmes available. I would like to pay respect to all the tutors over many years who have delivered to the very highest standard. I also respect the way the Institute have developed their programmes, especially since the global financial crisis, and today you can see how important conduct is to the work that the Institute produced throughout their curriculum. If I could get personal just for a minute and explain why this degree is such an honour, perhaps I could just take a moment to share my backstory. I did indeed leave school on my 16th birthday. It seems an awful long time ago. It was the 21st of September 1979. Many of you were not even born on the 21st of September 1979. And without boring you, university was never an option for me. So two weeks later, starting on the 2nd of October 1979, I started my banking career 
with the Bank of Scotland in a tiny little village called Dunkeld with only five people. So my journey to, through banking is a little bit unconventional. I finally joined university life in a postgraduate capacity in 1998 to obtain a diploma in management through evening classes. And evening classes has indeed been my friend for many years, not least when I left school and was quick to realise that I needed more qualifications to progress. The diploma arrived a full 20 years later, but a proud day nonetheless. And Alex has said, you know, I'd just like to thank the University of Reading for seeing me through. I can assure you that evening classes are never the ideal way to gain qualifications, especially when you're balancing a demanding full-time job and a growing family. I tell children at school today, work hard now. It takes the pressure off in years to come. One privilege which I have had in life is to be brought up and live in the UK with the ability to access world-class education, not only in my early years, but throughout my working life. Many countries can only dream of the facilities we have here in the UK. We really do have higher education providers that are respected around the world with highly regarded standards and renowned experts in key academic areas. I've also been very fortunate to work for four employers who all encouraged self-development and invested heavily in aspiring talent. This allowed me to gain access to exciting and cutting edge learning and development for which I will always be grateful. I am indeed extremely passionate about learning and continue to see education as a friend. Even after more than four decades in banking, I still continue to try and educate myself and learn new skills that the current environment demands. Reading remains a passion, if only there was more time to indulge. As well as continuing to self-learn, I understand the important role organisations play in investing in their people and playing a wider part in society. None more so than the work I do for Speakers for Schools. It is so challenging for inner city schools to embed that education is one of the world's great advancement tools. And indeed, I would go as far as to say a multiplier in your chances to succeed. As Mohammed said earlier, education, it really is a global enabler. At HSBC UK today, we believe every young person should have the chance to develop their skills and realise their true potential. I am proud to work with several key partners, including the Prince's Trust and Young Money, to make an impact through programmes in future skills, employability and financial education, reaching young people from three years old through to young adulthood. Within HSBC, investing in future skills is a key priority and I am fully committed to not only equipping colleagues to do their roles effectively, but also help them achieve their future career aspirations. My passion for education will continue and I hope inspire others that you can achieve whatever you put your mind to at any stage of life. Now, before closing, it would be remiss of me not to thank my wife, Gillian, who's here with me today, and indeed my four children, for all the support they have afforded me over the years. Gillian has seen it all, the good and the bad. We met at school, and it's not always been easy, so thank you so much for your continued support. We both know I would not have made it on my own. There are many others I could and should thank, but too many to say thank you today. What I would say, you're good friends, you know who you are, and thank you so much for supporting me through the journey. To everyone else here today, many congratulations. You will make your parents proud. Congratulations also on your accomplishments. I wish you every success in the future. I would underline, banking is a great industry. Please look after it. If you look after it, it will look after you. And finally, many thanks to Alex Fraser 
and all the team at the London Institute of Banking and Finance. You do an incredible job for the industry, and long may that continue. Thank you very much. I would now like to hand back to Dr Claire McCafferty to continue with the presentation ceremony. Thank you. Thank you, Ian. I am pleased to present the following qualifications where each student has pursued the relevant course of study and has satisfied the examiners. The part-time Bachelor of Science in Banking and Practice and Management with Honours, Holly Kimbling. <laughs> Jennifer Lomax. The Apprenticeship Bachelor of Science in Banking Practice and Management with Honours, Charlotte Cattell. <laughs> Alexander Gleave. <laughs> Zach Hughes. Charlotte Ishmael. <laughs> Megan Leatherland. <laughs> Fiona McDonald. <laughs> Matthew Reed. Tamia Rees. <laughs> Henry Simpson Lucas. <laughs> Charlotte Williams, who graduates with first class honours. Wozniak. Samuel Yudes. I now present our full time degree programmes Bachelor of Science in Banking Practice and Management with Honours. Jasmine Crabb, who graduates with first class honours. <laughs> Bachelor of Science in Banking and Finance with honours, George Axford. <laughs> Shima Begum, who graduates with first class honours. Jordan Collins. Adela Formosa, who graduates with first class honours. Michael Fullerton. Deval Jagri, who graduates with first class honours. <laughs> Kayla Green, who graduates with first class honours. <laughs> Mar
Mohamed Hussain. Ali Jahanshahi. Callum Johnson. Samir Khan. Saloni Mekwan. Olivia Moriano. Dylan Nut Brown. Hamza Qureshi. Annika Rani. Masuma Rashid. Pierre Emmanuel Samson. Max Selby Bird. Elmeniza Suknaj, who graduates with first class honours. Simran Shwami, who graduates with first class honours. Tarshan Tanaraj. And Cameron Uden. And for the award of Bachelor of Science in Finance, Investment and Risk with Honours, William Allen, who graduates with First Class Honours. Kasim Aziz. Ashwini Bapuma. Nathan Bell, who graduates with first class honours. Robert Brown, who graduates with first class honours. Luke Brown, who graduates with first class honours. Abby Colton. <laughs> Olivia Crow. <laughs> Ram Dabesia. Binta Darbo, who graduates for Thurskus Honours. <laughs> Macy Fletcher. <laughs> Ilona Giga. Vinny Glynn, who graduates with first class honours. Charlie Green, who graduates with first class honours. Khalifa Gurnawi. Saffron Hodge, who graduates with first class honours.
Samuel Hoffman, who graduates with first class honours. Dominic Hopkinson, who graduates with first class honours. George Jackson, who graduates with first class honours. Leah Jackson. Aaron Lancaster, who graduates with first class honours. Jasvit Bluers. Lauren Meakey, who graduates with first class honours. Alvina Maksud. Thomas Martin. Shaifa Masaakwa Pierce, who graduates with first class honours. Ross Miles, who graduates with first class honours. Kader Meyer. Adam Moore, who graduates with first class honours. Alex Morris. Manpreet Nagpal. Victor Nuttakor. Fox Parker, who graduates with first class honours. Ethan Perry. Robbie Plant. Lois Roberts, who graduates with first class honours. Lewis Rocher. Jaskaran Singh. Joel Smith. Ben Springall, who graduates with first class honours. Anna Turner, who graduates with first class honours. <laughs> Ryan Wilmot, who graduates with first class honours. <laughs> and Samantha Joe. I now present our postgraduate programmes for Master of Science in Banking Practice and Management, Ludwig Malia. <laughs> for Master of Science in Banking and Finance, Danette Botchway. and Lisa Grung.
That concludes the presentation of awards. The London Institute of Banking and Finance now confers the certificates, diplomas and degree awarded in absentia to those who are unable to be present today. Each has pursued the relevant course of study and has satisfied the examiners. Please offer them your congratulations also. It now gives me great pleasure to welcome our student speaker, Adela Formosa, who graduates today with a Bachelor of Science in Banking and Finance with Honours and is also a prize recipient. Hello and welcome to you all today, students, parents, family members, partners, friends, lecturers, staff, and those who are joining us virtually. It is an absolute honor to be here with you today. And I know that just like me, every single person graduating here is relieved that they are doing so in person. It has been a roller coaster of a journey, and uni life is stressful enough. Add in a global pandemic and worldwide lockdown, well need I say more. So before I start rambling on, I would like to start off by saying congratulations, everyone. You made it, we made it. If someone asked me to stand here as a speaker three years ago, I would have probably politely declined. The person I was when I started out university is not the same person here today, as I'm sure most of you here today can relate to. Looking back at younger us walking through LIBF doors back in September 2018 and meeting other students in the basement trying to make conversation over a Tesco meal deal, I remember that some of us were beyond shy, some instantly clicked, and some of us thought they were hedge funders from day one. <laughs> but jokes aside, fast forward three years, and whichever person you were when we started out, I am certain you can agree that LIBF University has helped us all grow so much as individuals. Today, I would like to talk a little bit about the word resilience, a word we have all heard one too many times, and the golden word during application season and throughout uni, even more so during lockdown. However, back in first year, this word was just a word which I only knew the dictionary definition of. You need to be resilient, they kept telling me, us. Yes, sure, I am resilient, I kept telling myself. But it is only now do I truly understand what it means to be resilient. Getting rejected after applying to numerous internships and grad roles and receiving the painstaking thanks but no thanks email is an awful feeling and sometimes hard to recover from. It wounds your self-confidence and makes you feel as though you are failing, leading you to the point where you want to give up each and every time. This is where I, for one, found an immense support system at LIBF. Everyone on the Higher Education Programs team, Louise, Sandra, Freddie, the library team, Nadej, Emily, our lecturers, Nadim, Ozzy, Simon, Jay, John, Stuart, Michael. We see you, we acknowledge you, and on behalf of my year, we thank you for all your hard work over these three years, especially during lockdown. There was no handbook or guidelines, but you all made it possible for us to continue with our studies as normal. To my friends at LIBF, I would also like to thank you for your friendship and support. Joining university society, such as the Women in Finance Society, has further helped build my confidence and has lit a spark in me. It is a platform which has allowed my determination and passion to advocate for my peers and female colleagues come to life. As women, we have the tendency to not praise ourselves enough and tend to rather diffuse our own shine so as not to come across as a pompous or a show-off. And I want to overcome this barrier and be part of the breakthrough. 
We should be proud of all of our achievements, no matter how small or big they are. And we should be gentler and more caring towards ourselves as well as one another. Sorry, chaps. We all know that you know you've done well, too. I am no guru or professional life coach speaker, granted. However, what I do know for sure is that we are all capable of achieving amazing things. And we all have so much potential, we just need to embrace it. As Winston Churchill said, success is not final, failure is not fatal. It is the courage to continue that counts. It is okay to fail, it is okay not to know what you want in life, and it is okay to change your life plan. Life is not always going to be rainbows and butterflies. Keep going, keep believing, and eventually we can all achieve our goals just like we are doing here today. Today is the end and the beginning of another beautiful journey. And my message to you is to be bold, and as Eleanor Roosevelt once said, do one thing every day that scares you. Mom, Dad, this is for you. Thank you. I made it. And thank you, everyone, for listening. I would like now to introduce Hema Tank, Managing Director of Higher Education at LIBF. Thank you, Adela, for the wonderful words and insights that I'm sure all of our graduates today will take away with them. Each year, the London Institute of Banking and Finance makes awards to those students who have achieved the highest overall marks, made a particular contribution to their programme, or supported their cohort through student engagement and representation. The student prizes for the part-time programmes are presented to these students. For the Advanced Diploma in Banking and Finance, Thomas Schofield. <laughs> For the Level 6 Diploma in Financial Advice, Alison Swift. For the full-time program, Bachelor of Science in Finance, Investment and Risk with Honours, we have two recipients. First up is Binta, Binta Darbo. <laughs> and Laura Mackey. We also recognize students who have demonstrated outstanding academic achievement throughout their studies. This year, the Scholar Prizes for the full-time programs are presented to the following students. For the Bachelor of Science in Finance, Investment and Risk with honors, Charlie Green. For both the Student Prize and the Scholar Prize for the full-time programs for the Bachelor of Science in Banking and Finance with Honours, these are awarded to Adela Famosa. The Dissertation Prize is awarded to a student in recognition of their outstanding academic achievement. We greatly appreciate the support of the Worshipful Company of International Bankers in providing a prize for the most outstanding dissertation submitted by a student of the Masters in Science in Banking and Finance. To award this prize, I would like to ask Mark Sisme-Durrant, 
from the Worshipful Company of International Bankers to come on stage. This year's prize is awarded to Danette Watchway. <laughs> Graduates, during the ceremony, I looked around this fantastic venue and it occurred to me that even though it is us who are sitting here on the main stage, the true stars of today are sitting here at the front. So congratulations to you all as it is through your hard work and dedication that you have achieved the recognition and qualifications that have been awarded to you today. We all know the lockdown has not been easy but you adapted and rose to that challenge. So on behalf of my colleagues, I wanted to say how proud we are of you. One of the unique aspects of this organization are the close ties that we have with the industry. Even today, this graduation ceremony is something special because we are celebrating awards and qualifications completed by some who have been in the industry for a number of years alongside recent graduates who are about to start their careers. It is through these links that we can run high profile guest lectures and networking events that give students and members the chance to network with future potential employers and colleagues. I must add that on a personal note, one of the many things that I love about attending these events is seeing how our students, members and alumni some who have been part of this institution for over 30, 40, and even 50 years, discussing some of the key issues affecting the industry alongside each other like that, it's really quite extraordinary. So, as you leave here today, you too will be joining our thriving, thriving uh, alumni and member community. Being part of this community gives you the chance to support the aspiring financial services professionals following in your footsteps. You could consider becoming a mentor or perhaps an alumni ambassador. And remember graduates, that these networks will support you and give you more chances to grow and become successful in your careers. So however you choose to engage, please do remain connected with us. And graduates, as you know, during your journey, actually even, probably your, even before your journey probably started, you have been supported and guided by some of the most important people in your lives. Your family, friends, colleagues, who have all been there to encourage you through your journey. The support may have been emotional, aspirational, or even financial, or maybe some parents may say it was especially financial. So yes, today is about you, but it is also about them and the journey that they have been on, hand in hand alongside you, through your ups and downs, stresses and celebrations. So graduates, I know you have been sitting here quietly for the last hour or so, so I'm going to ask you in a moment to stand up, take a look around and show your appreciation to everyone who is here for you today, supporting you by giving them a round of applause. Thank you. Congregation, the formal proceedings of today's graduation and presentation ceremony are now concluded. And I would like to invite you to join us outside in the courtyard for a group photograph and to continue the celebrations. And finally, 
On behalf of the London Institute of Banking and Finance, I extend to you all our very best wishes for a successful and rewarding career. Congratulations to the graduating class of 2021.